Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Black Eyes with me, Papa Amiga in German Reich. So, we are two episodes in on our way towards excellence and glory or utter defeat, depending on how this playthrough is going to go. And today we're going to continue on the course to improve our economy and, you know, general starting, not even preparations for war, but the general preparations to make our nations stronger. But before we go anywhere near that, I wanted to thank Popward because he mentioned in the comments that it takes a couple of days for the note that you can recruit a new SS division take place in the actual uh, division recruitment screen. So when we go there now, we can see that there is the SS Verfügungstruppe Brigade available. And I'm interested if it's gonna remove the two divisions that we have. Well, actually, they're, you know, they're divisions in all but name. The Germania and Deutschland are just one. Uh, no, actually, no, they're. These are not that one. Okay, so that's the Totenkopf, right? Those are the ones that have... Yeah, they have just two uh, two battalions, but these guys have quite a lot of semi-motorized uh, units. So let's see what these ones are going to be like. Oh, they're going to be six. So yeah, I think that these two will, will be removed and we're going to get one instead. We should also have the motorized... Yep, it has motorized artillery. So this is like a amalgamation of the two units. So let's put you back into the Waffen SS and we are going to continue on our journey here. Now, uh, we are going to start with the complete shift bowers at spawn, which we uh, read in the previous episode. The reason why I'm taking this one so early, even though it's not connected to any national um, research slot, is that it's going to remove quite a lot of penalties from our ineffective ship design. The German shipbuilding industry has been largely stagnant since the end of the First World War. Limitations by the Versailles Treaty and the Anglo-German Naval Agreement have greatly restricted the practical development of modern shipbuilding. As a result, while our naval industry is technically competent, the designs are not the most efficient in terms of size or material. So it's not going to remove it completely. The capital ships and carriers are still going to have a penalty of 4% uh, in IC cost and watch cruisers of 2%, but the rest is going to be removed. There's also a secondary benefit here. We're going to get two naval dockyards, some navy experience, and we're also going to get a capital shipyard, which will allow us to build four capital ships at once, because right now we are using 30 and we have 15 left. So if we want to uh, put the, the two uh, capital ships here of the, what, what is it called? Uh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, Bismarck class. So if we want to put uh, two more there of the Bismarck class, we will definitely need that extra 15 capacity that uh, this capital uh, shipyard should provide us. And you know, the Navy experience of 20 is going to be beneficial for us as well. I don't know how far we are from... Uh, the targeting. Oh, here it is. 42 days. One is going to go inside. We're going to get 20 Navy experience. Uh, that should be fine. Okay, cool. That's uh, going very well. And the remilitarization of the Rhineland. Germany has stationed troops in the Rhineland territory close to the French border in clear violation of the Treaty of Versailles. The local population cheered the German soldiers on, while the diplomatic reactions from France and Britain have so far been muted. It is no more than the Germans walking into their own backyard, a political commentator in Britain observed. Well, he's not wrong, but he's not also technically completely correct. So no new ships available. You guys are still drilling, right? Uh, you should be... You're not, okay. So I'd like to set you to drilling. I thought I did that last time, but I obviously didn't. So we're gonna start uh, by spending some uh, fuel on these guys so that uh, they get better experience. That will provide us also with a slight bonus to air experience. And the oil situation, I'm thinking we might start importing more oil from Venezuela. Once we hit, say, 50,000 in reserve, I'm gonna do that. And we now have 50, 150 political power so that we can get Hermann Goering 
an industrial planner. So he is going to decrease the political power gain by 2% and factory output by 1%, which is bad. But other than that, he's amazing. A civilian to military factory conversion cost lowered by 10%. Fascism support increases by 0.01 per day. Infrastructure cost um, is lowered by 15%. Airbase construction speed is increased by 10%. Railway by 7.5. Civilian factory by 5, which is what I want. And air assembly by 10%. So let's get him there. It's also very historical because we are going to get the Goering's four-year plan very soon. He was in fact in charge of setting the goals for us. So getting him in the government makes complete sense. So let's speed it up now. Uh, with the Air Force drilling, we are left with the few for... Actually, this is pretty cool. They're only consuming 95. So having one extra fuel import would be all that we would need. Now, importing from Venezuela would be nice. But uh, I might go a bit diverse here. Going with Colombia, for example, would be a good idea. Uh, we'll see. So we give us 20 naval experience here, we can speed it up a bit more. Oh, but before we go there, I forgot about one thing. Uh, I actually checked that we can now get the Ausstellung Welle 1. The Ausstellung Welle 1 is the first on the military build-up decision tree. During World War II, the German infantry divisions were mostly mobilized in Wellen or waves, as they were required by the changing fortunes of war. Wellen was the German designation for groups of infantry divisions raised at approximately the same time, with approximately the same type of organization and equipment, and that shared a similar type of personnel and level of training. From 1949 to 1945, there were at least 45 Wellen formed in the various Werkkreise or military districts under the supervision of the Ersatzheer replacement army. Developer note: most units of Vela Eins are being deployed with the startup of the game. Ah, okay, so those are the ones that we have here. Cool, that's good. Uh, but it continues. Around 11 infantry divisions are being deployed by events until the last unit is deployed. This template is locked due to the events. With the last event forming the 17th infantry division, the template will be unlocked. Ah, okay, so then we can uh, put them together with the other units that we have. Cool. So let's order them. Um, it's gonna start giving us divisions. It's not that, you know, we can fully equip them right now, but we do have a certain amount of equipment. And I'm seeing that we're actually producing quite a lot of certain things that we might not benefit from immediately. So the the Fudbuza models, we need more of those. Oh, but we have, wow, we have so many infantry guns and we're producing only 3.62 per week. That's interesting. Interesting choice. Okay, I thought that I could remove some factories from that, but no. White and tight tank. Yeah, okay, so that was the point of contention, but obviously that's not how it is. So we completed the Shift Bauer Zatz plan. Uh, and uh, uh, we are now going to go with the next one which will be the road to autarky just checking my notes here uh, i'm gonna read this i think i read it already but just to make sure the shift bauer zatz plan replacement ship construction program was a plan approved by the reichstag in 1942. the program called for two separate production phases the first from 1940 to 1946 and the second from 1946 to 1943. the latter phase was secretly intended to break the versailles restrictions and I'm kind of confused now because I thought that it said that it's gonna give us 20 Navy experience and we got only 15. It's a bit weird. Maybe I misread that. I was under the impression that that was 20. So now let's go with Road to Autarchy. And that actually means that we will not have enough uh, naval experience for the Bismarck. So we need to send some ships drilling. 
Uh, I say we send the uh, high seas fleet to drill. They do in fact need that experience and they will give us the most uh, most experience the quickest because the small ships would consume less fuel but they would take way longer and that actually tells me that we desperately need fuel now. So let's start importing it from Colombia so that we don't fall too far too fast. Yeah, the high seas fleet, just those seven ships now consume 185 per day which is more than 300 aircraft. And we finished the two first factories in West and East Berlin. So let's schedule two more so that we get those. We're going to be done on 20th of May. We're going to be done on 3rd of June. Okay. So that is fine. Are we producing anything outdated? No, just the ships. So how much are you giving us? 0.68 daily. Okay, that's fine. We already gained... Yeah, we'll be there in a couple of days. Probably not at the moment when we're gonna get this. No, we definitely are gonna be there before that. Amazing. Because that should be like 20 days worth of training for that one extra point. Cool, so that actually works out fine. And considering we have that... Yep, we got now... For the capital shipyard capacity, so we will be able to shuttle two more ships. I'm gonna immediately put the production from these uh, submarines on those because I want to get them as fast as possible. And okay, we're down to 26th of February 1940 and 28th of May 1940, so you definitely will not join us in the beginning of the war. That really sucks. I don't know if we can. Actually, you improve the output as well. So if we improve, improve it further and get some research done, we might still be able to push it down, but most likely not to September uh, 1949. Which sucks. That honestly sucks. But we'll see. We shall see. And we are starting, right off the bat, we are starting to feel the pressure of not enough military factories yet, 279 days. Arms deal. Today we received a highly interesting report from the foreign ministry. Apparently one of our embassy staff has managed to gain access to the local black market. Apart from all sorts of things, the usefulness of which seems rather doubtful to us, there are possibilities to smuggle or sell weapons. What instructions shall be passed on? Actually, I like the smuggle because that's uh, where we sell our guns to others and get political power instead and it's not much it's like 100 okay so we finished the quality control and here's the ordering 25th 26th 33rd and 34th infantry division because of the occupation of Rhineland these four infantry divisions Erstevelle were called into duty earlier than planned and were mobilized and stationed in Zarplatz for guard duty along the border with France. 25th Infantry Division stationed in Ludwigsburg, 26th Infantry Division stationed in Köln, 41st Infantry Division stationed in Darmstadt and 44th Infantry Division stationed in Koblenz. And they got General Major Schaller Kaldide, General Lieutenant Kühne, General, uh, General der Infanterie Ritter von Schober, and General Lieutenant Lütke. So let's create them. That should give us four extra divisions. Yep. And they truly are at the border with France. So this tells me that we need to uh, create a fifth infantry army. And it's going to be under uh, it's Harris Group, yeah, Harris Group, yeah, 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 Harris Group Ost. No, actually, this would be Harris Group West, because Ost will be all of the others. I think that it's West in German. I need to check that. And who's gonna command this? We need someone who will have defensive doctrine in both. Kichler, yeah, Girl von Kichler. A known face for us. So we're gonna command these divisions. Cool. So we got 25th 
25, 26, 41st and 44th. I actually have a half a mind of assigning these divisions there as well. Because that might make my life a bit easier, but well, we'll get to that later. Oh, and we finished that, what is it called, quality control. A focus on quality control will lead to gains in efficiency in the long run. So production efficiency growth increased by 5%. Now we're going to switch to free on refrigeration because that one lowers the consumer goods factories by 1.5%. And while this, not my, this might not seem as much, it's going to give us two, maybe even three factories for East Berlin. We have fairly high Demand for consumer factories here, 20%? No, 26, yeah, 26%, so that's, no wait, that's actually 26 factories, and it's 20% of our number. Okay, well getting more is always better. So this infantry division is almost done, the panzer division is not nowhere near done. And the half motorized division is nowhere near as well. Thinking that we might want to start training the marines just for good measure. I mean, we have nothing for them, but we need to get them. We we'll need four of those. Oh my god. Uh, well, I mean, sure, let's put them. Nah, it's too early. It's too early. Let's not put them there yet. And we finished the research of the Panzerkampfwagen 2. Ah, so let's get this one into production. And the next, yeah, next things are all ahead of time. So we can switch to Stöver M12 Kubelwagen. Platoon sized, it does not represent a single car. Small vehicles and other cars used for liaison and transportation in the field. Okay, so let's get it. And regarding our Panzerkampfwagen 2, they actually made um, historical models here that you can activate for a various amount of experience. Here we can get the Panzerkampfwagen 2A for 10 army experience. So let's get it. There are certain improvements that we could probably do to it before we put it into production. Yeah, this is this is a nightmare of things. Yeah, gearbox, simple gearbox. Yeah, we could add some additional equipment here, which would make the tank slightly better. But I decided a long time ago that I'm gonna go the historical route, so we are not going to do that. Let's get rid of these chassis here so that they do not... Uh, they do not clutter up on the, uh, the interface. And we are going to stop producing the Panzerkampfwagen 1 and start with Panzerkampfwagen 2, which actually costs more than double. Defense 4.62, okay, 7.28, the breakthrough is 7, here it's 12.61. Yeah, okay, I understand that it's better. Hard attack and soft attack is also more than doubled. Okay, yeah, it's it's worth every single IC that we're going to invest in it. But it's going to make the production way slower, so we need to think about that. How long till we get the necessary amount of tanks now? 67 days. Okay, well, still better. The Panzerkampfwagen's eyes were fairly underwhelming. Okay, so we finished the, uh, what was it called? Improved fire control system. By entering course speed and distance of a target, a mechanical computer can accurately predict where the target will be when the next salvo is ready to fire. Cool, so that gives us a huge bonus to light and heavy attack. It's amazing. And what are we gonna research next? Well, I know that we spoke about the improved transport ships. Oh hey, they cost only 290 days? I found it said something like 600 days. It was a couple of years. Small navy, small navy, research speed bonus for day. Huh, it's a bit weird. Well, but then, I mean, let's do it. Let's get it. 
And with this technology, we actually have the availability of the Bismarck now. So let's get the Bismarck. Historically, there were two Scharnhorsts built and two Bismarcks. So we are going to start with a historical setup here. So here's one Bismarck and here's another one. So let's put them for construction. Come on, there's so many things here. And the second one is down here. At the time of their construction, Bismarck ships or Bismarck class ships were actually the biggest one in the world until Yamato came around. There is a great story of one of these. I think it was the Tidipits, which was in north of Norway, stationed somewhere around. I think it was actually in Narvik itself. It was just stationed there protecting the area and it was called the. Oh, it was like the Lonely Queen of the North or something was nicknamed because it never really joined any battles, but the Allies tried over and over to sink it until they actually succeeded. But it was, you know, kind of cool to see such a massive ship in such a small city. Okay, so we need. Um, okay, we're just gonna produce one of each. And we need uh, nine, no, not nine, six shipyards or dockyards. Cool, so now we're producing them and we are short on tungsten, no, chromium. This is chromium, tungsten is over here. So let's increase the import from, from Turkey, not to 214, but just to 16 which should and does fix it and we also need to increase the production of Admiral Hipper let's put the two extra yeah and I think this uh, yeah we're using most of the imp imported chromium so that is good and here's our BF 109 and our combat engineers so, with the combat engineers now with us, there really isn't much that I can do here that would be on time. We could build a new class of trains after researching the BR-57. Uh, but instead I think we're gonna go with the white artillery gun barrel upgrade. It's ahead of time as well, but really there's nothing else that we can do at this point. So let's get this one. And for the aircraft... The BF109B. There's no A, that's interesting. This is you're starting with B already. In 1943, the Reich Air Ministry finished a study which called for a fighter to have a top speed of 400 kilometers at 6,000 meters and to be armed with a single 20 millimeter machine gun or two 7.92 millimeter machine gun or one lightweight 20 millimeter machine gun forward facing probably or forward firing cannon with two machine gun 17s. Uh, the BF-109 was Willy Messerschmitt's design proposal. When it debuted, the BF-109 set speed records, though its armament was lacking when compared to rival aircraft in production in England. Compared to the BF-109A, the B added an engine-mounted machine gun due to overheating and engine vibrations. The third machine gun was unreliable. Okay, but it has 450 kilometers per hour, and it is so much better than the one we're producing. So we're producing this one, motor all right? No, we're actually... Wait, are we producing the Heinko this one? Seems like... No, it's the... Yeah, why aren't we producing the other one? That's kind of weird, but okay. So what's the difference between this this one and... Yeah, there's the B one and this one. So... The range is actually smaller, that's interesting. Air defense is higher, agility is way higher, air attack is slightly higher. Not that much. Max speed is greatly increased. Air superiority is increased, so... Well, actually that's not such a big difference. Looking at that, I was expecting that the BF-109 would be a huge step forward, but... I guess not. 
so we could work on our Kozar support now, or but we're not producing the Kozar support. But we should start as soon as possible. So let's get the Stukas up and ready for production. That is a good choice in all cases. So we are still unable to get the third operative. Yeah, we're getting really small gain. Yeah, the end gain of 0.42. It's not much, but it's an honest job. Arm sale. Fortunately, our agent was able to protect his identity and his black market contact could not trace him back to us because it sure looks like our host country is discreetly buying some extra weapons. Shall we make the prepared delivery? These are mainly older but functioning rifles. Yep, 100 rifles in exchange for 15 political power. I am in. That is always a good choice. So, Road to Autarchy comes next. One of the principal aims of the National Socialist State is to secure Germans' complete independence from other countries' resources. To that end, the Fatherland's own selection of resources must be expanded. So it's gonna give us a 15% research bonus to Excavation 1, 2, 3, and 4, but just two of them. And it grants us Autarchy Trade, which gives us resource gain efficiency bonus of 2%. 2 extra percent fuel gain per oil and lack of resource penalty is lowered by 5%. Okay, so here we go. Autarchy has been gained. And the next one for us is the Goering's 4 year plan, which will give us various amounts of trades here and there. But it's gonna be fine. The okay, stability is still increasing, that's great. Oh, and I forgot to switch the fighter, of course. But that's good because we at least finished the last one. That's always a good thing when your production is not high enough. And now we're gonna start producing you. And we got 300 to upgrade. How many do we have in reserve? 19. Okay, so the drilling is consuming quite a lot of extra aircraft. But they're already up to green crew free, which means that they have no penalty in fighting. So that'll be good. But 300 aircraft of the fighter type is not going to save us anyway. So no need to be too afraid about that. Chinese development. The Chinese government has put our industrial advisors to good use, employing German led teams to find new resource deposits. Cool, extra 5% research bonus for excavation technologies. And here comes the next spy. So, what are we gonna get? Rescue operative cost, enemy intel, capture, sabotage, infiltrate. We're moving for someone that can change. Hmm. We can do some propaganda and change people's minds, but no one here. So let's just go with Elise Bazna, who has an infiltration bonus. Yeah, our network is at 18% in Sweden, so let's see how much of fascist ideology we can do here. Drift per day. Oh, okay, it now jumped to 0.01. At 18%. So hopefully it's gonna go higher. National coverage 11% is the only one that is modifying it for us. Okay, we no longer get imported chromium, but let's find it was just two of those, and we still want get the one extra here. So for now the dates of the ships coming out. Uh we are going to get yeah, let's sell some more guns. We are going to get you a February 1940, May 1940, and you guys are gonna come in 1941. Actually, I just realized that I haven't even checked what the difference between these are. Uh, between these two ships is. What the difference between them are. <laughs> yeah. Language alpha. So, Sharnhorn's cost is cheaper by about 1100 in IC. Okay. I think the main difference is going to be in the guns. Yeah, okay, so 
Uh, Bismarck has an extra anti-air fire control system and its fire control system is better and it has extra batteries. This one has 4 times 11 and Scharnhorst has 3 times 11 inch batteries. Okay. And the difference, heavy attack 47, 36. And this mark has... Oh wow, that is a massive difference. It's actually a difference of 20. Range is the same, but Bismarck's are slightly slower. Okay, gotcha. French Popular Front wins election. The French Socialists have won the election. Albert Sarraud will make large... There's probably large concessions. You can say large concessions, but large concessions to the French workers to quickly end the general strikes. The Socialists will seek to rapidly rearm the French military instead of focusing on the economy and political stability. Well, that's not actually... Completely true. I tried playing France in Black Eyes and it's a nightmare. You are basically blocked. Yeah, look at that. Victors of the Great War. This joint in government, it's Vico Stability minus 0.8. That's insanity. Stagnant economy and general strike. Consumer goods factory is 50. Yeah. As France, you cannot do anything in the beginning of the game. It really takes a long time before you can get the economy up and running. And it's usually by 1939, maybe late 1948, and at that point it's too late anyway. So, yeah. That's why France falls. Its own population tore it apart from the inside. Geneva is still drilling, huh? Okay, they have... Wow! They actually have extra levels here, above train crew 5. We still get a bit of penalty here. Okay, so this is the... Okay, regular crew 1 is what we want for all of our ships, which gives no penalty to anything. Okay, gotcha. So I'm gonna be done soon. Getting a bit of XP here. Well, we're still bleeding out fuel, so it's a bit of a mess, but I guess that once we are done with the training, it's gonna get better, and we might start importing a bit more fuel after these factories. Okay, more political power for us, extra 25, so we are soon going to be able to get another minister, though it might not really be a good idea to start with the Deutsche Werke. Because that is going to give us extra naval experience, which we can definitely use. And it is going to give us a dockyard output, and we need to work on the Kriegsmarine as much as we can. Okay, free civilian factories. Uh, so you guys are still constructing here, so let's put you back on Brandenburg. We can use every single factory we can get here. Yeah, they're being eaten up by our consumer goods. Not great. Training the workforce, audit the equipment. Yeah, we need to increase the stability, but I think that we're gonna start by getting the ship designer. Because, yeah, you're helping the capital ships. Wow, they actually killed one of our agents already? Yeah, they did. Okay, agent killed. It appears that Anton Dahmen, one of our agents deployed in Sweden, has made the ultimate sacrifice and died in the line of duty. Reports from Swedish sources are naturally sparse, but it appears that Anton Dahmen was being tracked by Swedish counterintelligence. It seems likely that he was about to be captured and either chosen death to avoid giving out vital information under interrogation, or was killed by Swedish agent while resisting arrest. A hero. Okay, so that means we're gonna switch uh, Cicero to building the intelligence network because that is more important than shifting the focus and here comes the Goering's five oh four year plan not five year plan <laughs> Goering's four year plan the Goering's four year plan was an economic initiative which Goering favored by Hitler over Hjalmar Schacht 
started in 1946. It involved, amongst other things, reducing unemployment and undertaking public work projects such as the German Autobahn. The Goering's four-year plan was actually the second four-year plan to be implemented. It was announced in September 1946. The four-year plan had four priorities. First, to increase agricultural production. Second, retrain key sectors of the workforce. Third, government regulation of imports and exports. Four, to achieve self-sufficiency in the production of raw materials. Coupled with the later formation of the Reichswerke Hermann Goering and the full backing of Hitler, Goering's control of the German economy was complete. The Goering four-year plan officially ended in 1940, but aspects would remain for the duration of the war. So the first year gives us a civilian to military conversion lowered by 2.5%, fighter output is lowered by 1.5%, infrastructure construction speed, airbase construction speed both increased by 10%, railway construction speed increased by 5%, military by 3%, air assembly plant by 10%. None of these are useful. But we need those. We need those because after the road to autarky and the Goring for uh, Goring four-year plan, we can now go to the Bank of German Aviation, which is going to give us another research swap. This one in Hessen focused on the air techs and air doctrines. And on that note, I'm gonna end this episode and go have some dinner. I might record one more today and upload it tomorrow. We'll see. Thank you for joining me, uh, I'm having fun. This is a lot of micro, way more micro than I'm, even I'm used to, uh, but I really think it's gonna be good. Yeah, we definitely need the, the Deutsche Werke so that we get our ships out, and I'm always short for naval experience, so getting extra here is going to be very beneficial. So let's go with that one first, because the Dukards are working at full capacity, and I'm not sure if it's gonna do that much of good for us, but it is definitely going to speed up the production slightly and make the changes to our capital ships way faster. So, thank you very much and see you in the next episode.